All right, hope everyone's doing well. So I'm gonna make this gonna be this video is really gonna cover just a few quick questions that I got on the Brooks Price Action website, and you know my intention is not to point anybody out. It's really, and I, I'm in my car, so I apologize if it echoes. My real intention is just to give a better, hopefully a better description of my viewpoint by a video you know I, I could type out a response however it just won't be as impactful is if I could actually discuss it with examples so with you know let's get to it so e mini trader he's been around for this person's been around for a long time uh, I'm a fan of them and anyways So the first kind of question is, was what's my reasoning for commenting on always in and when most days are trading ranges, which I totally agree. Most, most days are definitely a trading range and it's raining outside. I apologize for the noise. Most days are a trading range, but the main thing is it's a decent starting point. You know, I, I think if you can rule out dumb things, you're just going to be better off most of the time. So let's just kind of look through this real quick. So what's your reasoning for com trading always in most days? Most days are trading ranges, so you end up wind up getting chopped up. Let's see his next question. Yeah, so you know, I get it. This guy's talking about gap ups, and I think he was talking about Friday, maybe last Friday, or maybe in this day over here. I really can't remember. There was some day. Yeah, it was right here. So big gap up, and you know, I get it. So if E Mini, now I've kind of collected my thoughts. You know, this is directed to the E Mini trader. I just kind of I try to keep everything the same. I prefer the day session only just because it's what I'm used to however you could you could totally trade the Globex market or the continuous chart and at 7 a.m. or whatever time you're just gonna see a, a breakout so a gap up breakout same thing does not matter so to your point e mini trader you're absolutely right you can you can totally use a you can use a the Globex chart, but at the same time, when you have a gap up and you're looking at the day the day session only chart, you have a gap up. It's a breakout. So I don't, I, don't, I disagree in the sense of it goes against what Al does. Al's trading has derived from always in. So what do I mean by that? Well, Al knows that whether or not he sells below bar one, it won't go far. So maybe instead of holding and getting out several ticks above here, maybe he scalps out. Or maybe he says, it's not as high probability, I'll wait, and then I'll wait to sell this bar. Al takes a lot of always in trades. Now, he also gets out quicker because he knows the probability. Such as, you know, if you're, Al may just buy the close down here instead of buying up here. But even through this, and he might take a sell for a scout, but overall he's he know he's looking to buy. Whether that's a pullback or second entry, he's looking to buy. And the reason I use always in is it's just an easy, it's a reasonable way to view the market. So gap up, always in long. Three consecutive bear bars, probably gonna have to go sideways to the moving average, but it could be a trading range. Therefore, you know, if I do anything. I don't necessarily want to buy above here because we have a big down, big up, and again, we'll probably have to go to the sideways to the moving average. Second entry short, reasonable to sell. Big bear bar, bad follow through. I don't necessarily want to sell down here because I think we're, you know, we might be, overall, we're always, we're still always in long. We have a big gap up and this could just be a pullback. So it's a spike pullback channeling up. So up here, what I want to do, well, I'd probably, I'd rather buy a pullback. I don't necessarily want a short because we've only had a few bars below the moving average all day. This isn't that strong, so I, a tight enough channel first first let may fail. 
I'd rather look for a second entry. Just like here, if you're selling here, it's still a fairly tight channel, better to look for a second entry or a strong breakout below the moving average. So always in just is a way to help me remember to focus on stop entries and breakouts and keep it simple, like today. Today's an easy example. Big bar one, it's always in long. The only thing I should do is buy. I don't wanna sell anywhere in here, so I either get out of longs and go flat, or I find a way to get long. Up here, I only wanna buy, only wanna buy. Over here, it's still always in long, I only wanna buy. So worst case, even if I bought here and I had a stop wide enough, well guess what, I could get out up here. And you know, traders that bought here, they bought more lower, got out. Traders that bought here, and waited all the way down here, bought more, and got out. Look, watch this. So, look what happened right here. If I buy here, buy more lower, here's 50%. Here's, an, here's a reasonable place to get out. So, E-mini trader, I hope that makes sense. It's just, you know, I get most days of trading ranges. Most days look, most days look like this. But guess what? It's a gap up, so it's always in long. So, it, it, there's no... You know, other than the gap, you always want to wait for a consecutive strong breakout bars to really deem the direction. But we're holding above the moving average, so it's more likely long than flat up here. Gapped up, bar one, bar two, is it always in short? I don't know, it might be, but again, it's just not very strong. It's a tight channel up. Probably should wait for a second entry, okay. Is this second entry? Ah, it's not really great. Is it always in long? I don't know, maybe. We have a gap up from yesterday, but it's it's very close fit fifty. So E mini trader, here's an, here's probably what you're pointing out, and it's very valid. Bar one and bar two are not that strong, so it, you know the worst thing you can do is say, oh, bar two always in short. I'm going to sell. You get out, you know, up here for a loss. Then you go long here, and then you get out below this bar, or or worse, you get stopped out below here. Then you sell right here, and you say it's always in short. Then you buy, and then you you know you just get chopped up, and you got to be careful with that with always in. So here, do you want to sell? Eh, maybe, but probably not great. Look what happened right here. Bear sold the close, disappointed, tried to get out of break even. You know, if if you're typically, Alice said this a lot. If you're taking one of those trades, it's just not great. You're you're really better off like bar one and bar two. If you're really going to take that, you don't get out above bar three. You, you sell, put your stop up here, and you go to Walmart, and you just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to sell. Here's my risk. So here's twice my risk. I'll sell, put a stop target down here, stop up here. And, you know, you get in this case, you get stopped out. You know, maybe you get out above there. That's not really what I'm talking about. And I don't really like to do that. I, I try to be selective with always in. So maybe not sell here. Maybe, you know, do you buy here? Maybe, but again, you're buying in a tight trading range. If you do, you may want to be quick to get out. What's better is saying, hey, let's see a strong breakout with strong follow through, okay? Here's a very strong breakout, but bad follow through. You know, it's triangle, breakout below a triangle. Probably strong enough for a second leg down, so it might be always in short. But that could be all, the only second leg down we get. So if I did sell, I'd get out above there. Do I go long? Maybe. But it might be better to wait for a more clear direction. You know, at this point, you're probably always in long. But it's not easy to buy. And if you do buy, look what happened. You'd be down right here. So this is one of those days where just to say, hey, you know, you may not have anything great. And you may get chewed up. So I hope that answers your question. You know, try to be selective. There's a big difference between this and this today. Here, big bar one, bar two, bar three. Broke, we, we gap down below, strong rally. You know, these are big bars. Price has moved a lot of distance in a short period of time with these bars, not a lot of overlap. That's a good sign of strength. That's always in, that, that's really what I'm looking for. So and I'll, just to review, UK trader on Tuesday when Al commented about three or four strong bull bars. Let's see what day that was. I believe that was the. I believe that was the fourth.
So we're now commented about two strong bull bars. Blow this up. So here's gap up. Okay, so we gapped up two strong bull bars, bar four, bar three and four. When Al commented about bar three and four, those two bars I just showed, and later talked about the incredible sell at bar seven, he said three and four were too strong, and with the 3300 magnet, he would not sell it. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, that's probably right. So here's four, here's bar three and four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven's kind of this bar. It's really a low one short. It's not a great buy. This is a strong enough breakout, probably gonna have a second leg down. Yeah, that, that's a good example how you use momentum to uh, look at a trade, sure. And then he talks about Al not being able to structure a bar at bar 10, four, five. So here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, 10 second entry buy. And I, I could actually understand that. And the reason Al probably said that, it's a reasonable trade. However, the one issue you have going for it is look at the moving average and look at the lows of these bars. If you buy above here, you know where do you put your stop it's kind of a tricky place because there, there's there's a few probabilities you know of every day the highest single highest probability of any day it, you know the obvious one is the moving average the 20 period moving average will always be touched 99.9 percent .9 of days and you know i get it it might be maybe it's just 99 percent of days who cares but find a day where we didn't touch the moving average and let me know and we'll review it you're not going to find many. Probably less than one a year. So when Al sees this, this could easily be a trap and we could vacuum down to the moving average. You know, this might have happened actually la a few days ago. Yeah, so so what about this? I mean, this it's different. I know it's slightly different, but here's kind of a high two bind. We vacuum down the moving average. So yeah, I don't want to keep searching for one. That was probably, I didn't hear Al this day, but if I had to bet anything, it would be exactly that. He he wanted to see price touch the moving average first. And very often that, you know, the markets get chased, 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 and chased up to the point where everybody wants to touch the moving average. We eventually do. Kind of like right here. Why is this a bad buy? Well, it's a bad buy for that same reason. It's a high, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Triangle one, two, and three. Bull bar closing on its high, but it didn't touch the moving average. And maybe it barely did, but it's also late in, it's later in the middle of the day without touching the moving average. We're going to fall below it. I hope that makes sense. Comment if it doesn't, and I'll explain it further. And then, he, then this UK trader mentions yeah I mean you could have different data I mean Al talks about that here and there but I don't think it's enough to really matter if you're looking at a five minute e-mini chart then it doesn't matter I trade the micro e-mini and I still plot everything on the e-mini So, yeah, I, I like Al's markups of his trades and, you know, his, the, the injuries. you got to be patient with Al. It takes a lot of, you know, the best thing I would recommend is really watching his webinar and take a few years watching it, just being honest. The more you watch it, the more you kind of put things together. You know, the easiest thing for me personally was when I kind of just said, hey, you know, Al knows what he's talking about. I'm going to stop questioning it and I'm just gonna I'm gonna trust that he knows what he's doing and but again I only gained that trust because I started to see more and more things he talked about real time and said wait a minute what he's saying makes sense uh, when Al says I'm ready to sell 36 yeah I've heard Al say that so anyways I don't want to spend too much longer on this um, thanks for saying you like the videos. I hope they're helpful. 
yeah I'll, I'll discuss I'll try and discuss more of the things I do uh, I only I took one trip I bought today here got out somewhere I think I got out above this bar or something like that so bought bar one or bar two got out here and that was all I did um, yesterday I think I did something yesterday I'm trying to remember I think I I think I sold here and actually got out maybe at the close of this bar then maybe bought again here uh, for I mean and then stop trading somewhere in here if I had to guess I, I cannot remember but I'll discuss more of that in another video. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.